TJ says maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you all? I am thrilled to see you all this morning. I wasn't sure how many faces we would have in the building this morning after some phone calls I've had this week with lots of people out sick. So we want to continue to keep them in prayer and remember all of them. But we are thankful to still be able to meet and be together in the house of the Lord, right? So let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning and we thank you for all that you give us. We thank you for um, our health and um, all of the blessings you provide to us. And we pray, Lord, for each and every one that's not here this morning, Lord, whether it be because they are ill or helping someone else in their family or, Lord, just for other situations and circumstances. And we just pray that you would be with us and Lord, if people are watching on Facebook, that you would just witness to them where they are, because we know, Lord, that it's best to be in our ear house and to worship together, but we know that sometimes um, we can rely on the technology to get your word out to others, and we just thank you for that opportunity, and we just praise you, and thank you, Lord, and pray that you would just be with us through the service today and open our hearts and minds to what it is that you would have us to hear in all of these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um pastor already had the music and everything lined up for today and so I'm gonna let the boys take it from here and um, as they always say we're doing this acapulco so <laughs> we don't have music again this morning so our acapella men are gonna take it and run with it so let's join in everybody can stand and worship with them I found a new way of living I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. Abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, peace, he has made them mine. I have prosperity, power, and victory. Abiding, abiding in Abiding, abiding in the vine. We don't have any uh, words up here yet, so hang on just a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> See? Come on, everybody. We're waiting. Yes. Yes, Lord. Okay. Jesus, draw me close, closer, Lord, to you. Let the world around me fade away. Jesus, draw
the tears from your eyes. You're his child and he cares for you. When your disappointments come and you feel so blue, there is someone who cares for you. When you need This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise, all Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Thank you, guys. I don't know about you all, but I'd be hesitant to do that. <laughs> I uh, have been beating myself up lately because when I was little and in church, I sang, but not so much anymore, right? So 
Tommy says no. He's going to be up here yelling at me the whole morning again, isn't he? So, amen, he said. So, um, but yes, I'm extremely thankful for those guys and their willingness to do that without music and to just sing along. And we know that when we have a spirit of thanksgiving and a spirit of praise, that the music is nice, but it's also, you know, the words that in our state of mind and our hearts that matter. So we thank them for that. So um, if everybody would like to have a seat, we'll have the men come for offering this morning. I did remember. I've got myself a little cheat sheet. We'll see if I forgot to put anything on it. Oh, they are up here, yes. So we're thankful for these guys that serve on the board for us here at the church and help make decisions for the church. We're thankful that we are able to give back to the church and that as God blesses us, we can bless the church. So, Bob, would you lead us out in prayer for the offering this morning? Amen. All right. As they are collecting offering, we'll go through some announcements. I think we've got some uh, things to talk about. First, on our agenda, the 22nd of January at 6 o'clock is our workers' banquet. I think anybody that qualifies for that, Pastor Bush has messaged and asked to respond. If you have not yet responded, Please let him know if you've responded and changed your mind. Let him know that, too, because we've got to keep the caterers updated on how many people we've got coming. Remember, you can bring family members along with you if you wish to do that. Um, And so we hope most of you can come out and enjoy an evening to celebrate you on that night. The next thing we have here is the prayer chain. I think Pastor's trying to update his list of who he sends out text messages to on a weekly basis. And so um, if you, it looks like even people who are already on the list have been signing this. So even if you're already getting them put on here that you want to verify, you want to continue to get them. And I'll start this over here this time and pass that around and add your phone number if you want to receive those messages each day. And when... I know he has two different lists. One is the daily prayer text and one is the prayer chain when we have needs. And I'm not sure if this covers both or one or the other. I didn't read it closely enough. But um, add your name to that. And then also the Bible reading calendars. We're going to talk about um, reading in our word today. But back on the table back here are daily Bible reading calendars. If somebody has not gotten one of those and they still want to grab one, they are back there on February the 6th. We have the um, chili cook-off coming up. And so there's a list here. If you would like to bring a pot of chili or a peanut butter sandwiches or something that day. Um, So I'll start this one, Tommy, on this side with you. You can go the opposite direction. So if you're willing to bring soup, that is on February the 6th. So that's coming up before too long. And then like Leah announced and talked about earlier, on the 11th, we have our couples night out. Ask Leah if you have any questions about that. And then February 18th and 19th, the men are taking their fishing trip. And it's my, I don't, oh, he would have went back there. Um, It's my understanding there's still a couple of spots available. So if somebody has changed their mind and decided that they want to go on that men's fishing trip, get with Kent. And then March 7th, the ladies' Easter egg project begins. Did y'all see the pictures that were going through here at the beginning with the ladies thing? There's a great big egg that's like this tall. I've decided that they need to make us one of those to raffle off for speed the light. (laughs) When I saw that picture this morning, I was like, I want an egg that big. That thing was like a foot tall. So, um, and then May 22nd through the 25th is Tent Revival with Matthew Eckert. Many of you have seen and heard Matthew before, and we love him and his family, and We're excited that they are going to come back and join us, and I believe the tent will be out here on the north lawn um, near the new shelter house out there, and so that will be a great use of our new shelter. So I think that's all the announcements on here. What I don't have on here is about the fine arts competition that we're doing with the teens. 
um, and it is coming up on April 9th. I think it's April 9th. But the deadline approaches before then, sometime in March. So we're encouraging the kids to get involved when, if, with that. And so um, if anybody here would like to help mentor or guide some of those kids along in that process, I would love for you to step up and do that. Just get with me, and I will connect you with one of the kids that you might be able to help. So I'm going to grab my little stand over here. Eric's probably chasing what did I forget? Oh, the, the prayer oh prayer meeting on Tuesday mornings. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, I don't think we're doing that tonight. Yes, I don't think they're doing the prayer meeting tonight. Yes, so there will not be prayer meeting this evening, but there was the last couple of weeks. I do still feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, I know. We just need to pray for the needs in the bulletin, right? So let's um, do that. If you all have a prayer bulletin or a bulletin with you on the very back, as every week there are the prayer concerns up on there. So we will um, pray for those needs. If everybody would like to stand in prayer, I'm going to have you up and down back and forth all around this morning. So I want to, I was reading through these last night as I was preparing for this morning. And I just want to mention somebody that stood out here on this. And it says area, area churches, Briley Chapel. I know many of you know, um, Darren and Billy Sluter that are the pastors out there. And I just want to publicly acknowledge and commend them. We've got a girl that's been coming to the youth group now for a couple of months that is actually one of their kid, like a kid from their church, but they were, um, she was coming each week and they had the realization that they don't have a youth program that, you know, can support her. And so they came in, they talked to us about whether or not we'd be willing to take her. And so each week they make plans with somebody in the congregation and that little girl gets here. I say little girl, she's a teenager, but they bring her every week and make sure that she gets in church and that she's plugged in with a youth group. So I think that's fabulous that they're willing to, you know, cross lines and work together with other churches to make sure that the kids that they have are getting fed and getting what they need out of the church as well. So um, let's just take all of these things on here in prayer. As I've said, we have many out um, sick. We're not going to name names, but I know many of you know those people who are um, suffering this week and have um, different various illnesses and things going on. So let's just take a moment and pray for them. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we thank you for all of the members of our congregation and those who are faithful um, attendees, Lord, and who are here most weeks, and that, Lord, we've noticed their absence today. We know, Lord, that they would be here if they felt up for it, but you know what's going on in their lives. You know their health situations and other situations in our lives, and I just pray that you would reach down right now where they are and that you would just bless them, that you would bring healing upon them, and that you would just bring strength that... Um, they just are unsure where it came from, and Lord, that they have that realization that that strength and healing is coming from you, because we know, Lord, that you are the mighty healer and the physician, and that you can take care of each and every one of these situations and circumstances, and Lord, we know that on this list, there are people who lead um, the assemblies of God, both at a national level and at the state level, Lord, and just here in the church locally, and those teachers that we have throughout the church, and I just pray that for each and every one of them that you would just give them strength, that you would just give them a fresh vision and um, a hope for their position and what it is that they are leading, and that you would just um, spark in them a new desire to grow closer to you and to bring others along with them. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every one that is listed here. And I pray, Lord, that as we go about our week this week, that, Lord, it always mentions on this prayer list to um, list three people that we're willing to reach out to. And I just pray that you would spark in us an interest and a desire, Lord, of those people that you would most have us to focus on because we know that it's not us that draws people in, Lord, but that it is you. And so, Lord, whomever it is that you are working in their lives and stirring in their spirits, I just pray that you would quicken us to um, be a friendly face and to be your hands and feet here on this earth so that you could witness in, um, in the hearts of those that are lost and that Using us, we can draw them into the church. And we just thank you for all that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So rather than, well, down and up, which way are we going, right? 
(laughs) Rather than have you sit, I will have you go ahead and open your Bibles and we will get started with the message. It looks like we're running a little ahead of schedule, so we might get out of here a little early today. We'll see. I feel much better than I did this last time. I don't know if y'all remember when I was preaching last time, I was starting to lose my voice and I was getting sick and I was having a hard time struggling through. So we'll see how I do today. So last week I had mentioned fine arts and we talked about New Year's resolutions and we talked about those things that we're going to do. And so I'm going to try to tie that in a little bit to my message this morning and um, what it is that God gave me to deliver to you. So um, in John 10, verses 24 through 39, we're going to go there. I keep reading this scripture and I keep thinking, I'm not sure why or how this is the scripture that came out because when I think about resolutions, this isn't what I think about, but this is where we're going this morning. So John 10, starting at verse 24, says, Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him, and Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctify and sent into the world? You are blaspheming, because I said, I am the Son of God. I do not do the works of my Father. Do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe the Father is in me, and I am him. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hands. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you tell us through your word, and we just pray that Lord, we would read the scriptures that you breathed and penned through man that we could use those in our daily lives and that you would just open our eyes to see what it is that you would have us to glean from these messages. And I pray, Lord, that as I deliver this message this morning, that it is you speaking through me and not my own power and that you would just open um, everyone's mind to what it is that you would have them to personally hear from this message. We thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all can now be seated. So many times throughout the Bible, you know, um, the Jews, especially here in the chapter of John, we hear of how the Jews are questioning Jesus and they're attacking him and they don't believe that he is truly the Messiah. And so... um, In this, it says, if you are Christ, tell us plainly. How does he respond to that? He's like, I have told you. What more do you want me to do? Why are you asking again, right? But he says, basically, I show you this by the works that I'm doing, and I bear witness to who I am because of all of the miracles I've done. All of these things should bear witness to you that I am who I say I am. And so... When I got to thinking about this, I was like, how do we, each and every day, how do we bear witness that we are living in Christ's image? You know, Because ultimately, that's our goal, right? We're to live for Christ, and we're to um, shine his light out into the world. And so when we talk about the resolutions that I mentioned last week, you know, we often think at the new year, we start thinking, what are the things that I should do better that I don't do? And, um, or what do I do that I shouldn't do, like eat too much? Um, And so 
we start looking at all, all of these things, and most of the time, you know, as Christians, we think we should read our Bibles more, right? If we're not doing it on a daily basis, you know, do it on a daily basis, or maybe start out making sure we read so many chapters a week, even if we don't do it daily. We all set our own goals, and then we talk about praying more regularly and um, just spending time with Christ in quiet time, because a lot of us don't take that time to slow down. A lot of us will pray as we're going about our busy days. You know, we're in the car praying, or we're in the middle of doing dishes, and we're praying, but how often do we really just sit down, and that's the only thing we're doing, and so we spend that time with him, and then um, I mentioned last week as we work preparing for fine arts, one of the conversations I keep having with the kids is, you know, we all have gifts and talents that God gave us, and so how are we using those gifts and talents for his kingdom? A lot of times, you know, when we're younger, we have great aspirations of what we're going to do when we grow up, and then we grow up, and we get jobs, and we get busy, and we work, and a lot of the talents, per se, that Christ gave us, we use some on our jobs, but a lot of times we have talents that just get laid down, right, and things we don't do. And so what we're encouraging these kids to do is learn to use those talents to share Christ with the world. And so the, th or the tagline for fine arts, see if I can find it in my notes here, nope. Something, develop, oh, discover, develop, and deploy. And so deploy, you know, is kind of the big deal with fine arts, and that is what I'm pushing and encouraging them to do. But what is it that we as adults are doing each week? And so when we think about those things, we think about the resolutions we've made. Can, have any of you in here made New Year's resolutions? Everybody's like, nope. I made a few. Even if I don't write them down and kind of verbalize them, I think about it in my mind, what it is that I should be doing better and should be getting and doing. But a lot of times when I think about what those are, they focus on me, right? How many times when we think about what it is we need to do better, we focus on ourselves and the things that we need to do for ourselves. And so ultimately when we do these things, it's to develop our relationship with Christ but in the end, it needs to lead to us strengthening our witness to others, right? And so sometimes when we think about reading our Bibles and we think about praying, why do we do those things? Why do we read and why do we pray? A lot of the times, especially when you're younger and as you're starting to develop those habits, I said the word habit, that's not really the word I meant to use, but that's why we do it. We start with the idea somebody told us we should, right? And so I think that's where it came back to the, reading these scriptures. I got to thinking about the Jews and the Pharisees and how oftentimes throughout the Bible, especially there in the New Testament, they got so wound up and caught up in all of the things that they were supposed to do with the law that they didn't do the things or that they weren't aware of what even was going on around them. And so I've got a section here. I'm going to use my little old lady glasses. Um, it talks about the Pharisees, and it says that the Pharisees were a Jewish religious group that was faithful to the teachings and practices of the entire Old Testament, which they accepted according to their own human interpretation. Their personal interpretation often changed or overlooked the real purpose and principles behind God's law. They especially focused on salvation by strict obedience to every standard of God's law. And they taught that the coming Messiah would be an earthly ruler who would help Israel overcome and rule over the nations. And their religion was only an outward display. There was no inward godliness to their heart. And so when we think about reading and um, the word and in prayer and all of those things, I basically just want to encourage you today to do those things not with an attitude like the Pharisees have where it was law, it was something that, um, you know, is instructed for us to do, and so we do it just to check it off of our list. Does that make sense? And sometimes we have a tendency to do that, but we want to be careful to do it with the right state of heart. Um, I know right now with all that's going on in the world with the you know, pandemic and COVID and the rules and the regulations that are coming down and um, all of those things, we often look at those things and we get caught up with, 
thinking about the, the laws that are being passed and the things that are done. And, you know, we start criticizing the lawmakers and we start looking at, you know, well, why would they do that? And why are they shutting things down again? And everybody was mad they were shutting things down. And now I'm starting to hear grumblings that people are getting mad that they're opening things back up and not making, not, not opening things back up, but they're not making people stay quarantined as long. And so, you know, the laws around us are constantly going to change. I see Bruce grinning as he walks in and I'm talking about the laws. Um, but so those things are always going to be changing around us, right? And there's always going to be turmoil. But when we look at the Bible, there are a lot of prophecies about the end times, right? And it talks about the trials, the tribulations that we're going to face. And so in my mind, recently, I've constantly been thinking, are we really surprised? Are we surprised all of this is happening and that there is so much conflict and turmoil and whatever? And so unlike the Pharisees, we need to make sure that we don't focus on the laws of the even of the Bible to the extent that we are doing it simply to be doing it because we were told to. And the same way with the laws of the land. We need to make sure we're not focusing on getting too bent out of shape about the laws are being made and those that aren't and all that's being done because God's in control ultimately, right? All through the Old Testament, we see um, Israel and Judea and all of those things and they fought and struggled and they did worldly things and they had all kinds of prophets telling them what was to come, and yet they wouldn't open their eyes and see what God was trying to tell them. And so we have to make sure that we don't get into that state of mind. So where does our mind need to be? And at a point in the Bible in Matthew, the Pharisees are again questioning Jesus because they did that a lot as he walked on the earth, right? Ultimately putting him to death. But in Matthew 22, verse 37 they ask him, which is the greatest commandment? And they were trying to trip him up and trick him and whatnot. And he says to them, you shall love the Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so sometimes is it hard to love our neighbors? Yeah, I've currently got some neighbors that come and go all hours of the night. They wake us up nonstop. I see others shaking their heads. And um, so sometimes it's challenging to love our neighbors. But the end of that says, love them as you love yourself. And so I got to thinking about that, and I thought in 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, etc. And so he tells us to love ourselves, but then he talks about perilous times coming because people love themselves, right? And so it's like, hold on a minute. And so I think we all know what he means differently, right? We are God's creation, and in Luke, or not Luke, but like in Psalms 139, David is writing and he says, I will praise you for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. So when he talks about loving ourselves, that's how he's meaning to love ourselves, right? We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. We're made in God's image. And that's what we need to remember each and every day. And sometimes it's easy because we all make mistakes, right? We all have that human nature, um, but we need to know that we are God's creation and that's how we are supposed to live. So when we strengthen ourselves and we pray and we're in his word, what do we get out of that, right? So it's not just a matter of habit, but what is it we're trying to glean and what is it we're trying to learn? In 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And so sometimes I think we pray and we think about what it is, you know, well, what would God have me do? What does God expect out of me? And what is my purpose here on earth, right? And so sometimes I think we get in that cycle and get caught up with that, but if we stop and think about it, Reading his word tells us all of those things, right? If we read it with that attitude and we read it to learn and we read it with all of those things in mind. 
Um, and so sometimes I know I've tried to read the Bible and I've read through things and I'm like, I don't understand what in the world that is trying to tell me, right? Has anybody else ever been there, <laughs> right? There's just parts that are more difficult than others to understand. The more we read, the more we study, the more we understand, and God teaches that. But fortunately, we don't have to so rely solely on ourselves, right? If we read with the Holy Spirit walking alongside us and we read with that heart, excuse me, it says in Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you to will and act according to his good purpose. And that is one of the verses for the longest time I had on my mirror at home because it reminded me each and every day that it's not necessarily only up to me, but God is working in me and he is the one giving me those desires and he is the one that is helping me to act the way I need to in order to fulfill what it is that he would have us to do. And so... Um, in prayer, it's kind of the same thing as in reading the word. In Hebrews 4.16, it says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that he may, um, we may receive. I can't even read my own writing. We may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And he gives us the Lord's uh, prayer in the Bible as an example of how to pray. And so 1 Thessalonians talks about how we're supposed to pray without ceasing. ceasing. And so all of these things um, help us to develop that relationship with Christ. They help us to draw, draw closer to him and reflect on what it is that he wants us to do in life to um, show our light, his light, to the world. And that we are, you know, reflecting of him. Um, and so when we think about all of these things, as I'm writing this whole thing, I'm thinking, you all know these things, right? You know you're supposed to pray. You know you're supposed to read. But so many of us struggle to do that on a daily basis. Um, and again, we have to remember that it is not us, but it's God working in us to do those things. And so what is it? that we do with our faults and failures, right? We have that sin nature in us that causes us um, to not do what we, we know we're supposed to do. In Romans 7, 15, um, Paul writes, I do not understand what I do. How many of you have ever felt that away? I know I have, right? I don't understand what I do. For what I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do or what I hate to do, I do. So many of us, you know, because of the sinful nature in us, we try really hard, we work really hard, um, but we stumble and we fall and we don't do things we're supposed to do. And so the only way to change that is by coming to Christ, right, and relying on him to help us. I read the verse about, you know, he's the one that will work in us, but I lost my place. When we think about how does he do that? You know, how does God work in us and stir up in us and what examples does he give us? And so in Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6, you know, the whole book of Jeremiah, he's talking to the nation of Judah and he's talking to them about the fact that destruction's going to come on them, right? Just as we have prophecy about what is to happen in our future, he's there telling them, he's like, look, if you don't change your ways, if you don't do things, destruction's going to come on the, upon the nation. And did they listen? Nope. You know, a lot of times they continued to turn away from him. And so he's trying to warn them. And in chapter 18, at the beginning of it, the, in my Bible, it's captioned at the potter's house. And so I'm going to read that to you. In Jeremiah 18, starting in verse 1, it says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So when I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel, oh, I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand. 
so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hands, O house of Israel. And so just like here, you know, Jeremiah has been trying to tell the nation of Judah that they're not living the way they're supposed to. They're not doing the things they're supposed to. And so God uses this example, and he's trying to show them if, you know, they're marred like the clay. You know, what is clay made out of? It's made out of the earth, right? They dig it from the earth, and that's where the clay comes from. Where do we come from, right? Adam was made from the earth. And so just as the clay is made from the dust of the earth, so are we. And so to work with that clay, the clay has to remain pliable, right? The potter has to be able to have the right mixture of the clay and the water and all of the things that he's working with, and it has to stay moist. It has to remain pliable, and the potter works it, and he shapes it into what he wants it to be. And so that's kind of the example that Jeremiah is using here in chapter 18. And what happens to the clay the potter's working on? It says it's marred, right? And it collapses in his hand. I was watching a video because I don't know that much about clay making. I've never attempted to make a clay pot. I know a lot of people do that in art growing up, but I didn't. And so I'm watching it, and a lot of times they'll be working that clay, and all of a sudden it just collapses and falls, right? And I got to thinking, how many times in our lives do we feel like we're collapsing and falling? We feel like we're falling apart and we're not worthy to be in the position we're in. I'm not going to lie, I have really struggled with that the last couple days, thinking why am I the one standing in front of the church on a Sunday morning <laughs> delivering this message? I don't feel worthy, but I know God has a purpose, and I know he's put me here for a reason. And so a lot of times we do stumble and we struggle with that in our lives. We see the failures. We see the things of our past that we've done wrong, and we have a hard time accepting the fact that that potter, Christ, God, can lift us back up, throw us back into a pile of clay, and start reworking us, right? And something that never stood out to me in this, these verses before was at the very end of it. I'll just turn my page. At the very end of it, it says, he reworked it and he formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. And sometimes I think we think our failures are just that. But Christ, God, looks at those failures, and as he reshapes us, he uses those things to shape us into what we can now be. You know, he has a purpose for all of us, but as we make mistakes and we do things along the way, he's going to continue to use those things, and he's going to continue to put them into the mixture, right? Because he knows how he can then use that to help other people. And so sometimes I think we think we have to push all of those things aside that we have done wrong and that we've stumbled with and struggled with. But what we need to realize is that as long as he's still shaping us, you know, that piece of clay may have fallen, but he just uses that and he uses those mistakes and the marrings that's in it and he just starts and he continues to mold and shape us the way he knows that we need to be shaped to get what he needs out of us. I was actually going to bring a clay pot this morning, and I didn't. But um, each piece of clay has a purpose, right? When the potter's done with it, when it's fired and glazed and it reaches its final shape and formation, it's made for a reason. You know, I've got... a clay mixing bowl and I've got a little clay um, spoon rest that sits on my stove that my sister made me and I've got another little clay thing we bought in Tennessee this summer that cooks bacon you lay the bacon over it and stick it in the microwave and it cooks the bacon and so all of these pieces of clay have their own specific purpose just as God has a specific purpose for each of us and sometimes it's hard for us to see that but we have to remember 
that we have to stay pliable. And one of the ways we stay pliable is by reading our word and spending time in prayer. And by doing those things, we're more open to what it is God wants to do in our life, and he helps teach us and guide us through that. Um, and so what happens, kind of going back to the clay, what happens when, you know, the potter's got the clay on the wheel and it falls is one thing, but sometimes even further in the stage, they'll have a piece of clay that they've shaped, made, whatever, it's not quite fired, and they drop it and break it. Even then, they can pick those pieces back up, throw them in water, and it refreshes them and brings them back, right? And as I was reading that, I was thinking about the fact that God is often referred to in the Bible as our living water, right? And so the more we pour into ourselves from his word and in prayer with him, the more he will refresh our clay and continue to make us pliable and able to work for him and do the things that he would have us to do. And so, um, my pages are getting shuffled here. When we do all of those things, we have to just remember that we are God's creation, right? And he's working in us and he's working to keep us pliable and we have to be willing to do our part in that process. Um, it's hard sometimes to set aside the time we need to for prayer and for reading our Bibles. Or we look at it, like I said in the beginning, as we're just checking off of a list. And we're just working through what it is that we know we're supposed to do out of... Um, obligation or out of the fact that we've been told we have to do it but we have to make sure that we're doing it with the heart that we're trying to stay pliable and we're trying to stay in a heart of gratitude and in a heart of thanksgiving towards God and appreciative of all the things that he has given us um, so that he can do in us what he would have us to do um, just like the prophets of the Old Testament, you know, foresaw what was coming to the nations of Israel and Judah, whatever. There, like I said, there's plenty of prophecy that talks about what's coming for us. And we have to make sure that as we approach the end times and as things start to get a little crazy out in the world and all the um, things that we disagree with, that we are spending our time more on looking at life and how we can be a witness to God, right? That's ultimately our goal. We, our goal is not to, I mean, yes, to some degree, we have to worry about the laws that are being made and we need to pay attention to those things. I'm not saying we shouldn't. And we're thankful that we have people, you know, that are doing those things. But we also have to make sure that we're not just complaining about them and doing all of these things um, when what our ultimate goal is is to share Christ's love. You know, we need to be out into the world. We need to be reflecting what it is um, God would have us to do. And, you know, even as throughout the book of John, as he's, Jesus is constantly being attacked by the Jews and they're constantly questioning him and they're constantly doing all of these things. He didn't fight, right? Even when he was about to be crucified, he just didn't respond to all of the things that were happening in that realm, he focused on the fact that his mission was to die on the cross so that we could be saved. And so we have to make sure that our lives, that our focus kind of stays the same way, that we have to die to self, that we have to be willing to spend the time to grow closer to God and to get into the state of mind that we need to be in in order to do the job he has for each and every one of us to do. And so with that, I will close, but I want you guys to think this week about what it is, you know, that God's trying to teach you through your reading and not just read to read, but read for understanding and read for direction. And the same thing with prayer, just spend that time in prayer, asking God and staying silent. Um, like I said, I know a lot of us, we spend time in prayer as we're doing other things. 
you know, and how many times do we spend time in prayer just to be developing our relationship with Christ. And so I would just encourage you this week, I encourage you to reach out to others. Um, we all have people in our lives that we know aren't saved. Sometimes those friends and family are the hardest ones to reach, right? But I, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. I found this map thing on the Internet, which shows you the names of the people that live right around you. And so I've created a list. I don't even know these people. A lot of, they, you know, they're on this list. I know that they live a block away from me, and I've just started praying for them and praying for our community and praying for those. And it made me think of the time that Linda and Rob and I don't remember who all else was in that class. I think Paula was in that class. Downstairs they had created that map, 3D model of the um, city and all of the states and whatever. And they were praying for this city, and they were praying that people would come in. And so I'd like to encourage you to think about this week. Think about your neighbor next door. Think about, you know, people that used to be in the church and they aren't, and reach out to those people. I have absolutely been amazed this week at the number of people that have said to me, hey, I knew so-and-so was sick, so I made them some soup, and I took it to them and dropped, them at the, dropped it at their doorstep, or I made them a cake, and I took it. And you know, just people taking care of people in our congregation, right? And that's what we have to do. And so we have to make sure that we're taking care of our own, but we also have to think outside of our walls and who else in our town. Um, and I know a lot of you don't live here in Jasonville, but, you know, no matter where you live, who is it that you're reaching out to on a daily basis? We rub shoulders with people at work that we know aren't Christians and aren't coming into the church. And so... I would just encourage you to reach out to those people, um, and again, just take your time in prayer and your time in um, reading the word for God to spark something in us, and so I don't have any music to close out with or any quiet time, but if you guys, Scott's looking at me, um, we can, you know, put some slow music on if anybody wants to come up and just pray about that and pray about God, who is it this week that you would have me reach out to, and who is it that you would have me to be a witness to? And sometimes it's not, you know, hey, you ought to be in church. Or, you know, why don't you come to church? You used to come. But it's just being God's hands and feet, right? And doing things for people and developing relationship and showing them what Christ is all about. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you give us each and every day. And I pray... Lord, as we go about our week and we go into our jobs and we go into the grocery store even, if there is just a face, Lord, that we see that is downtrodden or someone that we know needs your love and your light in their lives, we just pray that we would have the courage and the strength, Lord, that you would just give us the ambition to step forward, to be a witness to you, for you, and to share with them your good news and the fact that Jesus was willing to die on the cross for our sins and that he is willing to do all of those things so that we um, can turn to him, repent of our sins, and it will lead us back into a life, Lord, in relationship with you, and that we take that relationship seriously, that we spend our week um, spending time in prayer with you, Lord, and just developing relationship and speaking to you, Lord, because we know that you are always there waiting to have conversation with us and to share with us what it is you would have us to do. And, Lord, we know that... Um, in the Bible, we have your word giving us instruction and guidance, and I just pray, Lord, that each day we would rely on that guidance to um, shine your light out into this world. We thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to come into your house and to fellowship with each other and to strengthen each other, and I pray that you would just give us um, strength and protect us all and keep us healthy this week. And all of these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.